right now on Chronicle in High Definition. A summer of sightings. Several great whites were seen by a spotter plane. Some close up. You could tell she was in charge. Tonight, it's my turn after a quick course in how to meet a shark. They smell it, they see it, they taste it, and it attract. They want to come to the source. Also tonight, a prized New England fish gone missing. It's really, I think, taken everyone by surprise. What's happened to the giant bluefin tuna? And a stunning display on Stellwagen Bay. Creatures of the Deep, next on Chronicle. Good evening. The movie Jaws came to theaters 35 years ago. Can you believe it's been that long? Well, this summer it feels like a sequel is playing out on some Massachusetts beaches without the gore, thankfully. How much do we have to fear from these creatures, though, is the question. I went to the shark zone to find out. The 12 foot long sharks were spotted tonight. Swimmers warned to stay close to shore. Morning. Miles of beaches are closed tonight in Chatham after the latest great white shark sighting. When a news story lasts a long time, it is said to have legs. As many as six sharks were spotted. Or in this case, teeth. Oh, but it came within 20 feet of a swimmer. It has indeed been the summer of the shark. That several great whites were seen by a spotter plane yesterday. It's just an amazing sight to see a creature that big. Captain Mike Peardenock had one of the closest encounters with a great white shark this summer when a 16-footer circled his boat several times. She wasn't like she's 16 foot like a hot dog. I mean, she had big, broad shoulders, big head, you know, and then it tapered back. I mean, it was just a thing of beauty. As she went through the water, you could tell she was in charge. She had a lot of intent. But while shark sightings can close beaches and send Cape tourism officials into a frenzy of their own, They've been good for Peardenock, who has seen an increase in charter customers looking to catch sharks. Great whites are a protected species, but blue sharks are plentiful in Massachusetts waters. We headed out on Peardenock's boat, Perseverance, to a spot more than 30 miles off Marshfield. Also on board, one of the deans of New England shark fishing, Captain Tom King, who has an interesting take on the shark hysteria. They seem to think that every shock is, is going to, you know, go after a person. And, you know, that's just not true. People uh, obviously not prey to a species like a white shark because they wouldn't hunt seals. They'd hunt people because people are a lot easier to catch. To make the blue sharks easier to catch, we need some serious gear. Bob Jenkins of Local Hooker Rods. If you've got the guts to call a company Local Hooker Rods, don't go cheap. Go as high end as you can, stand behind the brand, and build the best rods you can. And they are top of the line. Each rod is handmade to exacting standards to ensure each one has perfect balance or is spined properly. When you've got a big fish on here, and you've got a lot of load, and you've got a fish that's fighting hard, and you're fighting, and that rod is bent, if it's not spined properly, the rod is wanting to torque on you. So now you're fighting not only the fish, but you're fighting the rod. Mm -hmm. If the rod is spined properly, now what you're doing is all that energy is going down to fighting just the fish. And what you're doing is fighting the fish and not the rod. Once offshore, the chum bucket and bait hit the water. And we wait. It isn't long before the blue sharks are circling. They smell it, they see it, they taste it, and it attract. They want to come to the source, so that's the whole purpose of the chum. While they're going along and they, they intersect that, then they'll, they'll attempt to come to the source of the chum. It's a waiting game. The wait is short before we are hooked up and I'm handed a rod. But for Mike Peardenock and crew, this is about more than fishing. It's also about research. All the sharks are tagged and then released. If they're caught again, the tags will yield valuable data about where the sharks travel, the water temperatures they prefer, and their rate of growth. And even that's been a draw for customers. It's kind of exciting. It's something different uh, for the, the people that are fishing to, to tag them. 
and then send it in. And uh, you're providing that scientific information to help uh, the study of a, you know, a healthy population of fish and to keep that going for the future for good sports fishing. For Tom King, it is another way to promote knowledge of sharks in New England, a way to understand them and demystify them. We have a, a lot of big sharks in this area, like uh, the big makos are the largest in the world, caught right out here. The blues, the same way. There's just a lot of interesting stuff that people don't even realize. He's got a great website too, newenglandsharks.com, all kinds of information on the sharks in this area. Now those who fish the Outer Cape have been predicting for years that the great whites would be coming back. Restrictions on the striped bass population led to an explosion of that group of fish. That was followed by the seals because they feed on the striped bass and eventually of course that's followed by the great whites who are feeding on the seals. Mother Nature at work. A fish in great demand and disappearing supply. A marine mystery. When Chronicle continues in just 70 seconds. Coming up next, a mystery at sea. Where did the bluefin go?